I'm Eric. I'm Connor. And, and this, this is, is a PIO, PIO vlog. vlog. We have a working fire. Smoke sugar from the second and first floor alpha side. Charlie, one additional medic unit. Confirm one victim trapped in the basement. Omni wastewater plant. Six feet on three stories. Medium size commercial. I do have fire from the roof. Hey everyone, welcome back to another vlog. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a few different incidents to tell you about today, and the first one occurred back on December 10th in Douglas County at Highway 85 and C470. So this was the first time that the Denver metro area experienced measurable snowfall in over 230 days, which is crazy to think about. It's been so dry. So that was the first morning we had a snowstorm and ice and we definitely felt it across the district. There was a bunch of different car accidents and one of those included a diesel tanker that was exiting off of westbound C470 onto Santa Fe Drive, which is also known as Highway 85. It lost control on the ice and it actually tipped over onto its side and started spilling diesel fuel out of the truck. So we'll take you inside the cab of Battalion Chief Juan's pickup as he arrived on scene. Westbound Santa Fe off ramp. Channel SNS off three and VA rollover. Dispatch behind one. Third one. Plane one's on scene. We've got a small tanker on its side. Looks like all parties are out. We have active fluid leaking. I believe it's diesel. I believe I think it's 1904 in the placard. Uh, we have a large amount of diesel leaking. Let's go ahead and start a hazmat response. I'm going to be command on three. There's no units from command responding to this uh, tanker rollover. Extremely icy in the area you cross. One of the first tasks was to make sure that the driver of the truck was okay, and thankfully he was. He was able to self-extricate out of the truck before our firefighters arrived. When the hazardous materials team arrived on scene, they used their specialized training and equipment to slow the leak down on the truck, and they also created a dam, a barrier around a storm drain to prevent any more diesel fuel from going down into the stormwater system. That particular storm drain leads right to the South Platte River and fuel was making its way downstream to the river, which is a very dangerous thing. So thankfully that leak was stopped from making it all the way to the river, but it did affect the drainage and it also affected some of the wildlife, including ducks. An environmental cleanup company that arrived found that these ducks had been exposed to the fuel and they were sick and needed to be decontaminated. So Colorado State Patrol hazmat team members, as well as South Metro firefighters and this environmental company worked together to decontaminate the ducks and they were turned over to Colorado Parks and Wildlife and taken to an animal refuge for treatment.
This is an incident that lasted several hours and one of the big challenges was offloading the remaining diesel fuel into a different truck. And because all of the valves were broken or laying underneath the vehicle, they had to use a technique called hot tapping, which involves drilling a hole on top of a fuel truck and then vacuuming all of the diesel fuel into a different truck. So as you can imagine, that's a very complicated and dangerous operation, so it takes time to do, to do it the right way. And it took several hours to get this incident under control. later we had an incident over in the city of Littleton in our district so this happened on December 12th we got a call in the afternoon of that day for a smell of gas in a home and then an explosion afterwards our fire investigators actually got a video from a car dealership just across the street of that moment so take a look at it now Letter 12, Odor Investigation, Map Page, S23A5939, South Broadway. Ladder 12, Odor Investigation. Engine 11, Engine 17, Medic 12, Battalion Chief 2, Safety 18, Channel SMS Off 3, Explosion, Map Page, S23A5939, South Broadway. Engine 11, Engine 17, Medic 12, Battalion Chief 2, Safety 18, Channel SMS Off 3, Explosion. Let's do a working residential fire for me. We'll be positioned on the office side, we have smoke showing, the offensive investigating. When firefighters arrived on scene, they found smoke coming from the house located near the intersection of East Orchard Road and South Broadway. They also found windows had been blown out of the house from the explosion. Because of the number of people on scene that required medical attention, this got reclassified to a multi-casualty incident, also known as an MCI, in order to bring more medic units to the scene. A complexity of this incident was that while our firefighters were treating and transporting the people to the hospital that needed extra care, our other firefighters were on scene in order to get the fire under control that resulted from the explosion. They located the fire in the basement and made a transitional attack. Firefighters remained on scene, ventilated the structure, and to be sure that there was no further extension of fire into the rest of the home. The main floor of the home had some damage from smoke, but in the basement, there was significant damage because of the fire conditions down there. Our fire investigators came on scene and determined that there was a gas leak that happened in the home prior to the explosion, but the exact source of the ignition was not able to be determined. Our local provider of natural gas is Xcel Energy. They had a crew come on scene in order to make sure that the gas leak was not extending into other properties nearby or putting anyone else at risk. They stayed on scene for hours into the afternoon to be sure that the problem was completely mitigated. The third incident we want to tell you about happened on December 14th, so just four days after the big snowstorm that caused the tanker truck to roll over. Things dried out very quickly and we had a little bit of wind and a wildland fire occurred also off of Highway 85 at the intersection of Chat Ridge Court. And the name Chat Ridge might sound familiar to you. Now take a look at some of this video earlier. You can see how close and how quick those flames rolled up the side of this hill. Uh, firefighters used their uh, air power to really get a grip in front of this thing and stop it dead in its tracks practically. You can see some of those airdrops uh, taking care of uh, some of the ridges where that uh, fire was encroaching. But uh, with the help of the uh, ground crews chasing behind it and that air, air, uh, air power in front, they were able to uh, stop this thing from getting 
too close to any of these homes. Brush fire sent firefighters scrambling today, and those flames got very close to a busy subdivision south of Highlands Ranch. The Chat Ridge 2 fire caused nearly a thousand homes to be evacuated in the backcountry subdivision near Daniels Park. An electrical man malfunction on a power pole started the fire. Fire crews say strong winds, tough terrain, and dry vegetation were a real challenge. More than 460 acres burned. The flames were finally contained this afternoon, but oh, look at how close they got to those homes. No structures burned, and everyone was allowed back, in, back into their homes this evening. The first Chat Ridge fire, which occurred at the end of 2016, and the second Chat Ridge fire, which occurred in roughly the same location in 2020, and then we had the Chat Ridge 3 fire, which occurred around that same spot as well. When firefighters arrived, they found the fire burning on the northeast corner of that intersection, and it was being driven not only by breezy winds, but also by terrain. Version 40 on scene of a large mass of brush fires spreading northeast. You can see command offensive. Best access for the fire is going to be off Santa Fe. You're attacking the left. Battalion 1, show you on scene Santa Fe. Command is going to be remaining offensive strategy and fire attack. Your incident has been updated. We have an info issue now for 10 more seconds. This match is in 39. Engine 39. Engine 13 and VA with unknown injuries. Nav page R 18 D. Engine 40, command. Thank you. Engine 40, go ahead. I need you to disregard what you're doing there. I need you to bump up to the north side of this fire to stop the progress anchoring from this roadway. Your incident is updated. Bumping up to the uh, north. And engine 38. Back on West Metro, Company 15 is flying. Company 15, 10 for Go up there with brush engine 40. Ah. Santa Fe command. Santa Fe command, go ahead. Sorry, what do you guys need? Your Just approaching from, from, from the north on Santa Fe, where do you want me? I'll do a quick face to face with you in my vehicle. We're going to be at 9719 in structure protection right now. I'll copy your work in 9719 structure protection. Hey, yeah, I want you to assume Zulu Division. You've got Brush Engine 40, hey, man, man, one. Brush Engine 20, Medic 12. They're all up there. It's really crappy up there. Head up this road. Again, here. Zulu Division, Brush Engine 40, Brush Engine 20, and Medic 12. Last unit command. Med 1. Med 1, I need my vehicle. I'll be off of Santa Fe and Chatridge. Break. Brush Engine 40, command. Yeah. Brush Engine 40. Brush Engine 40, Brush Engine 20, Medic 12. I've assigned Ops 1, the Zulu Division. He's headed up to your location to figure out what need you are. What need you guys have? Come on, Ops 1. Come on. Okay, I'm in position the Zulu. I need uh, three type sixes. So I've got a road here that may stop it, but with the flame lengths, I'm not sure. Um, so give me three type sixes to start with. So sheriff's deputies did an immediate door-to-door -door evacuation of homes that were very close to the fire and then sent out a reverse phone notification to the Chatfield Estates community, putting them on pre-evacuation notice. A second alarm assignment was brought into the scene and firefighters used a variety of tactics with direct attack to anchor, flank, and pinch off the fire from continuing to extend. 
Because of our historic fires there in the past, air resources were called for very quickly. So a helicopter was on the way to help, as well as an aerial reconnaissance plane that we have, thankfully, very close to us. It launches from Centennial Airport in our district, and they can help us identify more facts about where the fire is burning and in what kind of terrain. Two homes were immediately threatened by this fire, and one of them the flames came dangerously close to as they crept into the backyard. These residents had done a great job ahead of time with wildfire mitigation, and that included mowing the natural grasses so that they were nice and short, and also keeping healthy manicured grass near their home, which really slowed the progression of fire and allowed our firefighters to get nice and close to do a direct attack and protect their property. The Chat Ridge 3 fire burned 24 acres and was 100% contained and extinguished the day of the fire. That was a good thing because the following day we had damaging winds from a high wind warning as well as a red flag warning that occurred. December might seem like a weird time for us to have wildland fires, but in Colorado our wildfire season is truly year-round. Whenever we have an extended period of minimal precipitation, our grasses and our brush get very dry and when we add the abnormally high temperatures that we've been having recently in the 60 degree range and a little bit of a breeze or even some of the higher winds we can see rapidly expanding wildland fires and for the next few weeks in south metro's district we're not expecting any measurable precipitation so the brush fire threat will still be prevalent as we are wrapping up 2021, we have so many amazing patches, challenge coins, shirts, anything that you guys have sent us our way. We so appreciate all of them. And we want to be sure to shout out the last ones of the year. So we have a few here that we're gonna get going with. So the first one that we have is the Township of Roxbury Bureau of Fire Prevention. All right, the next ones that we have are from the New South Wales fire service. This one is from the New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Service. And this final one is from the New South Wales Forest Service. Uh, just kidding, I actually have one more. So we have the Webster Volunteer Fire Department. The first one I have is from Matawaka, West Virginia Fire Department. And if you see me reaching over it so I can focus the camera and you can see these. The second one I have also comes from that fire department. This one comes to us from the Long Creek Fire Department. And finally, I have another cool German patch. This one is from Bavaria. Thank you so much for sending these to us and for watching our videos, giving us all kinds of great ideas on the things that we can show you. And uh, we're really excited to bring you more videos in the coming year. Mm, it's gonna be very exciting. We cannot believe that 2021 is over. Where did right. the year go? But we know that 2022 will bring a lots of new exciting videos, like Eric said, and we're really, um, really excited to bring them to you here on the channel. So stay tuned. Happy holidays and have a great new year. See you guys.